Howdy ho, Joe here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the image restoration features uh, that are included with Visions of Chaos. So we're going to start off with uh, machine learning, image restoration, and we're going to go with bringing old photos back to life. Uh, this has an option for high resolution images if the images have scratches. Uh, we're just going to keep this as is, and I've already navigated to a folder where I have put uh, these images in called old. So I'm going to hit process and see on the other side. All right, so here are the images. Um, as you can see, I'll go through them one by one. Um, did a pretty good job removing a lot of the uh, funk to make it a much clearer image. Night and day, in my opinion. Uh, there are still some oddities from these being AI generative images and not actual old photographs, uh, but it does a really good job equalizing things, getting rid of all the grain, the noise, um, yeah, pretty impressive stuff. Uh, not too bad for a completely automated script, in my opinion. Just go through the rest of these. This slice flapper girl. As you can see, add a little bit more contrast. Looks nice. Got this one here, this one here, and then these last images. So, as you can see, works pretty well. It uh, cleans up the images. I don't believe it upscales them at all. I think it just, um, yeah, I don't think it upscales them at all. It just cleans them up. Um, but we're not done yet. So from here, we're going to take a look at another feature of uh, Visions of Chaos with image restoration. And that is going to be um, right here, the GFP GAN generative facial prior generative adversarial network um, what this does is it, it improves the quality of faces that are generated uh, with ai so we're going to run this script on this image here and uh, just for the fun of it we're also going to increase the scale of this image by two so it'll be 200 uh, percent the original size uh, so double the resolution and there we go. So as you can see, it adds a little bit of funkiness, a little bit of noise, um, some AI-ness, if you will. But um, if you compare this to even what the restored was, uh, so I can just go scale 200. And uh, as you compare these two, you can see uh, you get a lot more facial detail. There's eyelashes, the nose is nice and sharp, there's uh, shine on the lips. Uh, so this did a really good job increasing uh, the quality of the face. From here, um, there's a few options. So we can further refine the face using some of Photoshop's neural filters. Uh, these can be hit or miss with AI generative faces. Uh, they can be hit or miss even with real faces. This is a new feature and um, you know, it's it's still it's still working. So let's say we wanted to make her look a little older. Not sure if this is going to work. Processing in the cloud should just take a second. And Photoshop will make her look slightly older. And then all these iterations after the initial process will be relatively quick. So that's original. That's making her look older. That's quite a difference. Um, make her younger, make her happy. That's kind of nightmare fuel. Uh, adjusting things minorly can produce somewhat better results at times. Um, messing with all of these features might not be advisable. Uh, but, you know, have fun. Play around with it a little bit. See what you can get. Um, it, it, might, it might surprise you. Uh, you can also uh, adjust head direction. So if you want thing, your character to, or your, your subject to turn their head, you can do that. This is a little iffy with this particular picture. Um, you can adjust light direction. That can also get a little hit or miss, but um, can help out if you want to change the direction the, the light is hitting your subject's face. Um, so these are all things you can do. I'm gonna turn that back off, turn it back on, didn't do anything. Um, anyway, so what else can you do? You got the smart portrait. You have skin smoothing, which I don't think will do a whole lot with this. It did a little bit. Um, we can remove JPEG artifacts. 
It'll take just a second. I'm assuming it's going to get rid of all most of these little creases, just make things look better. And we can colorize the image right here in Photoshop as well. So look at that. That's not too shabby. So I'm going to hit OK on this. And uh, from here, we are going to um, test this output from Photoshop versus uh, what kind of colorization can be done in Visions of Chaos. So um, we're going to go machine learning, image restoration, colorization. And uh, there's a few options. We're going to go through them together. So here is that upscaled version with the face enhancement. And we're going to first try artistic. Shouldn't take too long. Um, even with me recording, it should rec you know do run the script all right. This is a relatively low cost script. When it's done, it'll open up in Photoshop. I'm going to take the image and paste it right here next to the other one. Uh, I'm going to give it the benefit of um, JPEG artifact removal as well, just to put it on even footing. Hit OK, and you can compare the two outputs. Um, I think that Visions of Chaos will give more, um, I don't know, reserved colorizations. Um, it won't take as much liberty when it comes to your background. As you can see here, there's a lot of color variation in the background of the subject. Um, I mean, this isn't a real picture, so it's probably being caused by a number of factors, uh, but you don't really get that here with um, Visions of Chaos's, at least the artistic uh, version. So something you could do, like let's say you like the skin more so on the Photoshop version, but you like the background of this one, um, is just create a mask and mask away the parts that you don't like, uh, which is all very, you know, simple Photoshop stuff. But let's say we liked the dress, we liked the general color on her, but we didn't like the, what it Photoshop did with the background. Bam, look at that. Pretty, pretty quick fix. There's still a little right there in the middle. Here we go, pretty quick fix. Um, as you can see, judging from what we started with, <laughs> quite a difference. If I do say so myself. All right, so let's uh, check out the other image uh, that we're looking at and see if it's, uh, you know, is, is this a one trick pony? Is this just one thing? Um, a, a cosmic coincidence? I think not. So we are going to upscale and increase the face on this image as well. So just take a moment and boom, we're in Photoshop. And uh, from here, I'm going to also bring in the old original picture before we upscaled or did anything to it. And um, let's try Photoshop's version of colorization here. Face is still a little wonky, but I, I think it's still a lot better than it was. So what happens if we, is this face gonna pick up any better? Can we actually adjust it? Only time will tell. I think this this woman, she, maybe she's older, you know, maybe, maybe that's, you know, she's just a little wee bit older. Ooh, so, you can see that it changed the hair quite a bit, changed what's in her hand a little bit, changed the shadows. Um, so it can be a little unpredictable at times with what it does. If you don't like it, you can just put any of these values back to zero. Um, thicker hair, less thinner hair really have the hair go back and away. I kind of like that as like a cleaner hairstyle. Expressions. Oh, she's a little surprised. Ooh, no, no, doesn't seem to work. Um, so like I said, these can be a little hit or miss. Uh, we're going to fix the uh, JPEG artifact removal. 
and um, while we're at it, let's let's colorize it. So look at that, wonderful. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now let's go into Visions of Chaos and attempt to do the colorization on the upscaled image and see how that goes. So here's the upscaled image and we are going to process it with Deoldify Artistic. There are other options for um, these colorizations. You can do uh, what Deoldify Stable. You can do Deol... What else? You can do Deoldify Stable, and then there's Colorization ECCV16 and Stigraph 17. Um, I would recommend running your image through all four of them and also running it through Photoshop and then using masks to get the parts that work best, if not going into Photoshop and then manually adjusting things um, or just doing the full colorization in Photoshop. But the more tools you have, the more scripts you have, um, the better suited you are to tackle any problem. So I think having these Visions of Chaos um, enabled scripts only benefit and make you a stronger creator. I mean, maybe not stronger, but definitely uh, well, more well-surrounded and uh, better prepared. So um, here is the uh, raw output from Visions of Chaos's artistic model. Compare that to the Photoshop version that I touched up. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty, you know, not, not bad, comparable. Um, once again, the Photoshop had a little bit of face touch up and uh, I do like the skin more. I like that it made this part of uh, her outfit a different color. It doesn't quite all blend together as much. I mean, it's a lighter, but it's still, you know, similar. Um, but once again, the backgrounds just get unpredictably wild and uh, there's always just a little too much color variation in my opinion with uh, black and white to color colorization uh, within Photoshop with their raw tools. Um, that being said, they do have a pretty nice um, tool set to refine and manually do everything. Um, so that's always an option. But um, yeah, from this to this, pretty, pretty nifty, I think. All right. Well, if you've gotten this far, thank you very much. Um, please click the bell if you want to see more things like this when they come out. I'll be doing more feature overviews for Visions of Chaos. Um, let me know if there's something specific you want covered. Uh, and um, yeah, I think that's about it. Keep on thinking on.